Thank you, yes. <laughs> okay. Um, so, um, in VR, sound immerses you in the story of a space. Sound is inherently spatial. It creates a more complete sense of immersion. In the real world, it envelops you, and you can hear all the different layers coming from a specific direction. There's a reason meditation techniques use sound so much to bring about a sense of presence. It surrounds you in a moment in time. That fits in with VR perfectly, where we can use that spatial element to guide the audience through an experience with sound cues. When people hear something in the distance or behind them, they are naturally drawn towards it. So we are directing a gaze or body movement subconsciously. This helps create a seamless experience of a story. So it's a very important in VR when you have an entire world around you, it can be hard to know where to look. Regardless of whether a piece of art in VR is animated or static, sound adds movement, life, and an element of time. This makes it a powerful tool for storytelling. When you can design these little snippets of time to be discovered throughout a space, it really brings you into that world. It creates an experience that's more interactive, and in VR, when you're interacting with your body, that's what makes you feel immersed. So in the more, we use the body to trigger sound and vice versa. There are a lot of ways of being creative with it, so throughout this talk, we're just gonna take you through a few examples. So to accomplish this kind of immersion, there are some different methods or elements we often use, and they're used throughout the museum in almost every art piece um, that we design sound for. The first is ambience. So you can hear it there as it kind of surrounds you. Um, most of the sounds you hear in this museum are elaborate ambiences. So each world you create should have what we call a bed, which is an environmental loop. In this piece, Alex's Sci-Fi World by Matt Schaefer, brain is the bed that grounds you. And it's created with four mono files that are placed around your head, and they follow the camera with six relative positions, but don't rotate with the camera, so you can turn your head inside the ambience. Then there are spot sounds. Spot ambiences are also loops that are placed all around in the space for you to discover, like this spray painting. Um, as you get closer to them, the volume fades up following what's called an attenuation curve. You can set the distance on these curves so bigger sounds can be heard from further away and draw you in, and smaller sounds are more like secrets to discover. You won't hear them until you're really close. This also encourages people to explore more once they realize they, they'll find these sorts of things. These are little stories. They're details that help add life and movement to a world, like that little conversation between bugs. They can be uneventful or entire sequences or conversations that ebb and flow. Even if it's not a linear story, the feeling of life and the emotion of the sound is what drives that. Um, and then there's music. So in this piece, the music is diegetic, which means it's a sound that lives within the world. This technique often uses futzing, which is the process of making it sound like it's coming from a radio, a phone, or in this case, a band. I do recommend making music uh, diegetic in VR so you can move away from it, and because music with no source can take you out of the environment but it can compensate by carrying an emotion. Um, it's just when non-diegetic music is overused that it can overload and create kind of a numbness, um, unless it's more atmospheric, like an ambience. The ambience in a lobby of the more is a bit of a cross between music and ambience, for example. Um, then there are scatter sounds, which are non-looping sounds that create um, that trigger at a random location in time. These are often birds, gusts of winds, or other environmental sounds, and they add the sense of space that's alive, because life is random and doesn't loop. Um, and then here is a piece called Skeletons by Liv Edwards, and it's another example of a spot ambience that can be heard from further away to drive you towards the skull. 
And then when you teleport into the skull, that those laughs are what we call SFX, which is just short for sound effects. They are the interactive sounds, and in VR, there are a lot of ways to get creative with them. So in this case, we use the movement of the body through the door to trigger them to do that big laugh, and then we use the direction of your gaze as a trigger. So when you look at each of the skeletons, it triggers another randomly selected laugh. It's less conventional than having the sound direct the gaze, but that makes it really fun because a lot of people don't realize it's what's happening, and they're just given this weird feeling that the skeletons know what they're doing. It really brings them to life. Again, you are creating the story with your body. Um, and then this is another piece by Liv called Ghouls, and it's another example of how spot ambiences can help bring sculptures to life. In this case, with literal breathing, which is just following the existing animation, but they don't have to be animated to have a sound like this to get that effect. It encourages you to move closer to the ghouls and adds to their character. You may also notice that the bed ambience is here in this piece to bring you into that feeling of creepiness. So those are the basics of how we implement and design sound for art in VR. Um, and I also wanted to touch on how to communicate abstract ideas about sound because we often hear people saying they don't know how to talk about sound. So if you're wanting to communicate with a sound designer and help them understand what the story you want to tell is, um, this is some of the language that could help. It could also be a starting point if you want to experiment with making sound yourself. It's often hard to find the words for this sort of thing because VR can be so abstract. Um, so the first question is, how do you want people to feel while experiencing your piece? This can be anything from positive, dark, moody, sad, or relaxed. Pretty much any emotion you can think of is a great piece of direction. Then there are different kinds of design. So there's organic, which is grounded and often based in natural elements like water, fire, earth, wind, glass, metal, or wood. Um, and then there's synthesis, or synth, which is often used in sci-fi settings or if we, wanna, if, you, if we want things to sound more high-tech. Um, that's made by manipulating sound waves. Um, and then in terms of uh, language around sound itself, there's frequency. Um, and different frequencies can communicate different feelings. Lower frequencies can be calming, while very high frequencies can be unnerving. And it's not always the case, but that's kind of a common use I have for them. Um, references are always great. Uh, there's vocal examples, so just make the sound with your voice. People often feel silly with this, but it's very legitimate. Half the sound design I do is just with my voice. The entire ambience of the base museum is made from just my breathing. Then there are effects. Um, sounds that have effects like reverb or delay are often more magical or otherworldly. Um, then you can use sound descriptors like ethereal, floaty, tactile, realistic, grounded, crunchy, aggressive, impactful, um, or subtle. Uh, then, so on those terms, uh, I'll talk about Immateria by Kabibo which is an example of adding sound to something very sound, to something very abstract. This piece could really sound like anything. Um, to start, I thought about how the tone and the way this piece makes me feel. I almost always start my design with organic sounds, so I recorded a bunch of weird stuff with some chimes and a banjo. To make it sound otherworldly, I reversed a lot of the sound and added a ton of reverb and effects. These are just looping sounds, but what you can't hear in this video is that the piece is reacting to voice, which is Kabibo's premise. Um, but there are always technical restraints with experimental art, and we weren't able to get the sound tied to that reaction. Uh, so I tried to design this with as much movement as possible. So just then you could kind of hear something behind you. That's a uh, scatter sound, which is in that area with the ribbons. So those sounds randomly sweep by from all directions. 
here, there are multiple spots on this string um, of the same sound since it's so narrow and long, so you can kind of follow it along. Um, and for all these pieces, it's kind of one installation, so they're all using similar source material, but they're manipulated and recorded in a different way to capture the various movement, but remain cohesive. Um, and wherever possible, I added spaces to discover that feel different when you enter them, like this cube. I wanted it to feel cozy and closed in, in contrast to the open space of the rest of the piece. Then there are spot sounds that communicate their movement, like a stream of bubbles you can float around in. So you can hear it as you approach, and then when you enter, you start floating. Um, this sound piece I did for the more called Capsule is an example of another application of sound for VR that opens up the conversation of recording techniques. Here I use binaural microphones. Uh, I'll let you hear it. So binaural microphones record sound relative to where the microphone is or the listener is. The microphones go in each ear and because of that, they record how humans hear because they take our head into account. Um, they're really good at capturing memories because it sounds like you're listening through someone else's perspective. They work well for this piece because it's telling the story of stepping into a piece of recorded time. Um, they're not designed to move around in though, and so they aren't ideal for VR, except for more creative or static applications. Like here, where you're entering a bubble, and that's where you stay and listen. Um, the spatial aspect of the piece comes when you make the decision to stop and start memories by coming or going. But if you want to create a linear sequence and your audience that you want your audience to move around in, ambisonics are the way to go. And that's the end of my part. Because